Welcome class. Today we're going to do another problem called the lighthouse problem. Uh, once again, this is related rates and let's just dig in. All right. So um, this is problem number 38 in the um, related rates section of the sacred book, otherwise known as the James Stewart 4th edition. Um, it says the lighthouse is located on a small island three kilometers per away. Uh, from the nearest point P on a straight shoreline. It's always a straight shoreline. And a light makes four revolutions per minute, so it rotates around four times in one minute. That's important. We'll come back to it. How fast is the beam of light moving along the shoreline when it is one kilometer from P? Alright, so to label things here, this is going to be one, where the beam of light is hitting the shore, and this is going to be three kilometers. Alright, um, the other things we're going to need to label here, um, we're going to need this angle theta, and we're going to need to figure that out, uh, probably in some way, shape, or form, using something like this. Um, I will say, this is a no calculator problem uh, when, it, when it appears in the AP exam, so you need to be able to figure out um, trig values for this angle without actually having to figure the angle out. Alright, so um, we'll call this Y up here, and we'll call that X. And in terms of theta, that means we're dealing with tangent. So tangent of theta is going to be y over x. And dy dt is what we're trying to find. Okay? So what we need to do is we need to multiply both sides by this x. Now the other thing I should tell you about x is that distance isn't changing. It's not like the lighthouse is floating away from, from the shore or anything like that. So since that distance isn't changing any, we can go ahead and substitute 3 in for x and not worry about it. However, y is changing because the, light, the beam of light is moving up and down the shore. So um, what we're going to have to do here, so we'll multiply both sides by x, but x is going to be 3, so y is going to end up being 3 tangent of theta. All right, and at this point, we know we need to take a derivative. Uh, we know we have to use the... Uh, chain rule, and implicit differentiation, whatever however you want to think about it. So dy dt is going to be 3, the derivative of tangent secant squared. So that's secant squared theta. And then our chain rule gives us d theta dt. Alright? Seems simple enough, right? Well, it gets a little bit more complicated. We've got to figure out what d theta dt is. And they told us that the, the, the light rotated around 4 times per minute. But that's not what d theta dt is. So that's four revolutions per minute. Well, how far is it in one revolution in terms of the angle? Well, um, that's pretty simple. So d theta dt is going to be 2 pi, because that's, that's a whole circle, right? So 2 pi radians per revolution, and then times 4, because that's how many times they said it was rotating around, revolutions per minute. So we're going to get um, out of that that d theta dt is going to be 8 pi. Yay. Okay. And that's radians per minute. All right. Uh, we need radians because that measures things in terms of a distance as opposed to a, an angle measured in degrees, which is not really a distance. Okay. So after that, what we need to do is we need to figure out how to find secant of theta. Remember I said this is not a calculator problem. So here's how we deal with that. So We've got a triangle. Theta is right here. The opposite's one, then the adjacent's three. We need to figure out the hypotenuse. Okay, so we just do the old Pythagorean theorem, and one squared plus three squared. That's going to be ten, and that's going to be what this side squared is. So this side is going to be the square root of ten. Okay, so why is that relevant? We need to find secant of theta. We know secant's one over cosine, so cosine of theta would be adjacent over hypotenuse, so that would be 3 over root 10. So that means secant of theta is that flipped. So that's going to be root 10 over 3. Alright, so we've got everything we need. So we need secant of theta and we need d, d theta dt. We've got it. So to come back to this part, um, dy dt is going to be 3 
times root 10 over 3 whole thing squared times 8 pi. Okay, now if we multiply all that out, um, it comes out to you know, the, the, the square root of this, uh, the square of the square root is going to cancel that square root out. So we're going to have 10 over 9, and then 3 we cancel with one of the 3's in the bottom there, so you didn't know with 10 thirds out of that. And that times 80 is going to give us 80 pi over 3, and the units here are kilometers because that's what everything's measured in, in terms of distance per minute. Okay, just so we know, um, when you're doing problems like this, sometimes you want to think about um, does this mean anything in terms of the real world and is this answer realistic? Um, this one's a really good one to look at because that's really, really fast if you think about it. Um, but when you're out there in the middle of nowhere, that's, that's the, the light is going to be moving past you in a really fast manner anyway. So uh, that's roughly... 83.776 kilometers per minute and remember on the AB exam you're supposed to use three decimal points that's why I did this here um, however just in terms of thinking about the problem those decimal points aren't really relevant because this is a really big number um, that's about 5026 kilometers per hour and like I say it, it may be similar to when you're in a car and you're looking off at a distant point and it doesn't seem to be moving fast but when you look at something closer it's moving really really fast I'm not really sure with physics behind it um, but that's our answer thanks and I'll see you next time